Hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Today we're going to get inspired by a daily meditation reading, a passage from Melody Beatty's book, Journey to the Heart, Daily Meditations on the Path to Freeing Your Soul. Her work, Melody Beatty's, is often used in recovery. It's often used um, when, it, when you talk about codependency. She actually is from Minnesota. She doesn't live that far from where I <laughs> I, uh, Rome, let's say that. <laughs> okay. So, and how this book is set up, is like each day you can go through by the year each day and just read something for that day. And then use your journal to contemplate whatever passage or piece of information comes through for that. Or it can help to give you something else to focus on or think about besides something else that might be more, um, distracting or destructive to you. So it kind of helps set your mind, your thought. Okay, some of it's deep too. So I'm just gonna give you a heads up. So we'll find out what our topic is after we read this, okay? So it says, go a little further. I arrived at Oregon's Willamette National Forest after dark. Suddenly I found myself at a fork in the road. To the right, there was a chained gate marked Foot Traveler's Welcome. And to the left, there was an open road marked Nature Sanctuary Authorized Visitors Only. I stared at both signs. Then I headed to the left. I didn't see anything that looked like lodging and I began to feel uncomfortable. Like one of the unauthorized visitors, the sign warned about. I, I backed the car out to the fork, turned around and left. Two hours later, I still hadn't found the retreat. I was tired, worried about, about running out of gas. I tried to remember what I'd been learning that despite, I, that despite, oh, I tried to remember what I'd been learning, that desperation attracts more desperation. That's true for anything, right? I realized and visualized, I relaxed and visualized myself finding the retreat, being given a key to a room and going to sleep in a bed. I visualized it until I could see the scene clearly in my mind. Before long, I found myself back at the fork. I mean no harm, I thought. So I'll just drive down the nature sanctuary road again the one for authorized visitors only. I drove so far, I drove as far as I had been before, then decided to push ahead a bit more. I rounded the bend and there it was, the parking lot, the night office, and a man who could give me a key to my room. Within 20 minutes, I was in bed for the evening. Sometimes we need to go farther than we thought we could. We need to go past our fear, past our uncertainty, past the bend we can't see beyond. If we stay on the course, give it that extra push and go around the bend, we may find what we are looking for. Hmm. Let's just let that settle for a minute. I literally see the image of the corner, don't you? And I know that we all feel like this. The level of uncertainty, the unknown is challenging. It's always going to be a challenge. Uncertainty has always been here. We just never were that, it's psychically in tune to it. The energetics of uncertainty or of unknown have become more obvious to everyone. Not just the people who consider themselves empaths or not just, not just people who are intuitive or psychic. Everyone feels that. It's this feeling of something bad versus something good. Our natural instinct in our mind is to go toward the bad, to prepare for that inevitable other shoe to drop or to help to prevent us from some pain or from deeper pain. Because if we know about it and we are preparing our reaction or response to that bad situation or scenario outcome, then we will feel better when it actually happens when the truth is, as you have well heard and many different other experts speaking about this topic, your body 
reacts and responds just like as if it is happening. So when you project or think or feel and then ma make in your mind's eye the storyline of something not good happening, then your body is experiencing over and over and over again the fear, the worry, the trauma of the not event, the not event. As in this story, in this passage by Melody Beatty, she visualized, she was able to calm down and not feel so desperate, calm herself down, which doesn't mean you turn yourself off. Calming down does not mean turning yourself off or turning off your emotions or that you're wrong or that your emotions are bad. Emotions are information. Your body is giving you senses, sensory responses to give you information so that then you can make choice. It's not giving you information for direct action. It's giving you information for awareness that then creates a action that is appropriate and aligned with you, not reacting to a desperation or a fear. This is always a challenge. This will always be a challenge. This is always going to be the challenge. We're always going to err on the side of being afraid of what we don't know instead of bracing the opportunity for the universe to surprise and delight us. I know, I know, I feel this too. I, me too, me too that way. But these times that we are living in have brought us to a point of challenge where we have been so forced into a constant state of unknown, of uncertainty, that we have begun to sort of revolt from it or become rebellious against it. And it's kind of like, well, if you can't beat them, join them. That's not at all going to help us. I was, I was speaking with a client um, yesterday and this came up to me. There is a, uh, a, a passage by Wayne Dyer, Dr. Wayne Dyer, who I can't remember if it was in Wishes Fulfilled or Excuses Be Gone, his books or his talks, but he used to say, you can't get sick enough to make a sick person well. You can't feel bad enough to make a person who feels bad better. Like the misery loves company, the can't beat them, join them vibe. It, it works if you want to let go and not have any kind of choice in your life or responsibility or accountability to how you are actually creating your life. And I get it. People sometimes like early on in my psychic career, people will come to me to get answers. And I was like, <clears throat> so frustrated by that, even though being a psychic, like, isn't you're like, but Bridget, isn't that what people do? They come to you and you give them insight. I'm like, yes, I give them insight. I give them the connection of the energetic information that I see and sense, feel and hear that gives them insight, information. It doesn't give them answers. It doesn't tell them what to do. I do not tell them what to do. But people are and have been when they are pushed into a state of unknown and uncertainty and, and you're afraid, which is a natural human thing. It's a natural emotion sphere. And you're anxious and you're desperate. You gotta know, you gotta know something. And people are in that place willing to give their ability to choose to somebody else so that they can make the choice so that if it goes wrong or it's bad, then they don't have to accept that they didn't do anything about it. They just trusted this other person. Therefore, this other person, you, whoever, coach, some motivational speaker, a doctor, whoever, gave you information and they must know better about life, your life than you. And so therefore, because they have some special skill, whether it be a lawyer, a doctor, a psychic, or whatever, that they obviously know more, they're an expert, therefore I'm just gonna blindly or just lay down my own autonomy <clears throat> and follow them. And it's not because people are stupid. Nobody, people are not that stupid. We are not that dumb, we are not. We have the ability to discern, to think, we're humans. And yet when we're in times of unknown and uncertainty, th this instinctual, just, just decide for me, just do this for me, just tell me what to do. And, <clears throat> excuse me, in times like that, in times like this, it's not about what to do. It's not about um, uncertainty is not cured by doing something. That's not true. 
You cannot cure the unknown by doing something. An action is certain, it's a tangible thing, yet the action itself in alone by itself isn't gonna just magically change everything. It's a start. An action step is a start. And you can try different action steps to see what works just like Melody did in the story. Different action steps. I tried this, I tried that, I tried this, and then I did this. She tried different things. That's what action is about, trying different things. Decisions are plural. You make a choice, you make a decision, then you make an action. And then if that doesn't work, you're back at the choice again. It's a circle, right? It's you're back at the choice again. So then you make another decision, right? And then that results in an action. So it's a process and it's continuous. So you don't just make one big decision and your life is great. You make one big decision and then there's a whole bunch of subsequently little decisions that help build that change. I think that gets lost in us. I think there's this perception of we make a change and magically something happens like somebody's rise to stardom or rise to fame or somebody on YouTube that seems like all of a sudden they're an overnight success. It's like the overnight success took 15 years. We lose sight of that in this fast paced, instant connect like world of constant information. And yet really, this unknown or uncertainty piece is something that sure feels like it's something that's amplified by the excess of our desire to connect. Oh, no, that's not right. Um, the uncertainty is being amplified because what's being shared like on social media is all the energy of desperation. <clears throat> totally fine to share your feelings and your opinions and that kind of thing. However, the flip side of that is don't just come on then when you feel bad, come on when you're feeling good, come on and show examples of being okay. Just okay. Because most of life is about the center point and being aligned. And when you're aligned, things are flowing. They don't feel spectacular and they don't feel crappy. They feel just Okay, like you're open and there's still uncertainty that exists all around you and it's always here and it's always been here. It's just now we're using it as this poster child for all of our fears, our feelings of mental health, our challenges with mental health, like depression and anxiety. And we're using them with feelings of shame and guilt and not enoughness. That's why uncertainty feels so big. It's not big. And it's a land of mysterious opportunity for sure, for sure. Because if everything was planned out, would you really be all that excited? Like if you knew how everything was gonna go, would you really wanna be here? You'd probably spend most of your time trying to change the stuff you didn't necessarily like about it anyway. And therefore then create a totally different experience. And so <laughs> the unknown and the uncertainty, although it totally is a pain in the butt sometimes, is a good part of our process. It reassures us, it gives us opportunities. It reassures us that our spirit is here, that our intuition is here living in our body and that we have to rely on something else just besides our brains. And we have to pull in our resources into our center core. And when we do that, we connect with ourselves. And that's the purpose of uncertainty, connecting with yourself, pulling yourself into alignment. It's not about, dis it's not about disengagement from others or the outside world, it's about, being with yourself and then with the world, moving with the world in the natural rhythm of things. And that feels about right. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh, all right. This is Bridget. Thank you so much for being here for Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. This is my weekly podcast here on Above Life Channel. Sometimes it's audio, sometimes it is a video. And you can expect it on Sundays. I'll see you on Mondays for the weekly channeling video with Afterlife Celebrity Guests, which is designed to inspire your spirit and fill you with some hope. And you can also join me on Fairy Grasshopper, my other YouTube channel as well, to learn more about intuition, to learn more about me. I share a lot of vlogs there. And I talk about intuitive talk, 
talk topics and also different kinds of divination tools and things of that nature that will help you as a spirited being living a very real human life. Thanks for being here.